Hi everyone, today we're down at the Royal Perth Yacht Club Annex in Fremantle and here we have one of the most incredible restored 45 foot vessels on the Perth waterways. This vessel here weighs in at 15 tonnes, as you can see it is an immaculate vessel, it has been incredibly maintained and restored and the last thing on the list was to repower. The previous engine was a Volvo TAMD 122P, set at about 610 horsepower and we're looking to replace that with a brand new FPT Cursor 13 marine engine set to 750. It's been installed, we're down here now, ready to go for a run and do our first sea trial. So on board here, you can see that the doorway is quite tight. We had about 750 mils, give or take, from side to side. The engine is wider than that. So Jeff and his team at Bay Marine did an amazing job to actually reduce the width of the engine to allow the Frana 15 ton crane to actually get it in, through and down into the engine room. What had to come off, come with me and I'll show you exactly what components had to come off the engine. Once it was in, the engine has dropped in really nicely. We've been able to reuse the existing gearbox mounts because we've actually retained use of the existing gearbox, which is a ZF311A gearbox in a 2 to 1 ratio. That is a very coaxial or almost coaxial gearbox, meaning that the input shaft and the output shaft on the gearbox are very near level. And what that's kept is kept the engine height down as much as possible to ensure that it does fit uh, within the engine room without uh, requiring a, a box. So you can see that we do have a flat floor and you can see just how close we actually are in regards to the fitment of this engine whilst it does remain underneath floor height. So the bits that had to come off to fit through the door was actually this right hand side of the engine here which incorporates the heat exchanger and the intercooler, some of the intercooler pipe work at the rear as well and those components are serviceable components down the line of the engine. So whilst there is you know, a reasonable amount of work involved to, to remove them, it wasn't the end of the world to do that to ensure that this engine would squeeze through the doorway without making a huge job of having to completely strip out uh, the rear of the saloon to do so. So the old engine that was installed in this vessel was actually from the commercial crayfishing days of this original vessel here, which was a Volvo TAMD 122P. That was set at 610 horsepower at about 2250 RPM. Whole reason for the repower was to renew the engine in regards to reliability, stepping up to the latest technology, which is the electronic Bosch uh, unit injection on this particular engine, and to increase the horsepower to allow for a speed, an increase in the cruise speed. The aim was around about 18 knots, so we'll certainly see how we go shortly to sea trial uh, to see if we can actually achieve that. So Jeff and his team at Bay Marine have fabricated these amazing stainless steel front mounts which allow the, the new engine to pick up the existing cast iron mounts at the front of the new Cursor 13 engine. And as I said, the rear mounts at the back, because we reused the gearbox, meant that we didn't actually have to change the gearbox mounts at the rear, which really cuts down on the cost of installation for installing a new engine in a vessel. Cursor 13 uses Bosch electronics on it. It is an electronic unit injection engine. Here you see that they mount the ECU on the engine, nice and dry. And as well as that, there isn't a great deal of electronics there otherwise, which we have for the Cursor 13. I'll swing you over here. We do have three boxes that sit here. This is our relay box, which allows for local starting and stopping of the engine within the engine room. It also provides us with a diagnostics plug. We have our CAN bus converter here, which converts all the engine signals into a digital signal to head up to the, uh, to the touchscreen dash panel, which we'll show shortly. As well as that here, we have a module here for the oil charge and discharge. This is a very cool little box, which basically has a momentary on toggle switch in both directions, which means when you are due for an oil change, you don't have to put oil in manually. You flick it one way, an electric pump will suck the oil out into drums, you put it into your new drum of oil, you flick it the other way, the oil will automatically get sucked back into the engine for you. Makes for a very easy service procedure and very quick. Over here, we have 
the turbocharger arrangement on the engine. So the Cursor 13 uses two turbochargers, they're whole set turbochargers. You see one is side mounted here on, on the left hand side of the motor and the other one is just tucked behind and is a rear mounted turbocharger. They both are identical turbochargers and they work together uh, to provide boost for the engine. Now what they do also, what happens is as the exhaust gas exits the turbochargers, they join together in a Y piece here before coming into the wet exhaust mixer and then actually heading down the back of the boat. Each boat is different in regards to requirements on exhaust systems and really truly the aim, the end goal is to ensure that the back pressure does remain low uh, so you're not resisting too much pressure against the engine and allowing the water and exhaust gas to flow freely out the back. We have managed to use an 8 inch system here on this exhaust and Bay Marine have done a great job in running that out to the back of the vessel and most of that system was actually reused from the original Volvo 122 which really again has just been another way that we've tried to keep cost to a minimum in regards to the installation. So here on the right hand side of the Cursor 13, this is really where we have a majority of our seawater cooling system. It's actually a very simple and very compact and very efficient system. So here is our seawater inlet pipe which comes from our sea strainer. It heads straight up into a bronze seawater pump tucked up up and in behind here. Don't be concerned about how the access of it. Because it is a bronze impeller, not a rubber impeller, it means it doesn't require the regular service that you would with a rubber style impeller seawater pump. From there, the seawater heads directly into the intercooler, which is here. We have the boost piping which comes in from the turbochargers across the top here through the cooling ch charge air cooling and then it heads straight into the inter inter intake manifold on the cylinder head uh, in the side. The seawater then progresses straight across here into this particular housing here which is your freshwater seawater heat exchanger. Now that ensures that the closed circuit cooling system which has that green coolant in it always remains at around about 70 to 75 degrees in this particular Cursor 13 engine. From there it comes straight down here and this is great. This is the gearbox oil cooler which is actually inbuilt into the engine which means that we don't have an additional cooler on the back of the engine which in significantly reduces the run of seawater cooling. From there that's it. It runs around the front of the engine into a flexible hose straight into the exhaust mixer and out the back of the boat. Very simple, very short run of cooling and it does make for maintenance uh, to be very easy. We've got sacrificial anodes easily accessible there and there uh, on the cooling system as well which are the zinc anodes just to ensure that they take the brunt of the corrosive seawater and not the engine components themselves. So the old Volvo that was in here was a 12 litre engine. It weighed in at roughly the same weight so it was around about 1300 kilograms for the Volvo. We're looking at close to 1400 kilograms for the bigger 12.9 litre Cursor 13. As I said, we've increased horsepower from 610 horsepower at about 2250 RPM up to 750 horsepower at 2400 RPM. Now, physically, the Cursor is around about the same size, if not marginally smaller, compared to the existing Volvo. But there are some features of the Cursor which make it an excellent candidate if you do have a tight engine room. So you can see, as we said, about how tight previously it was up the top here. We've still got plenty of access here uh, to ensure that we can access these coolers as required. But the other really good thing about the cursors is the sump. The sump on these are an incredibly shallow sump and they are raked east-west as well. So we have a lot of uh, engine beds here and stringers which are very close to the sump. And the engine sump isn't too far lower compared to the SAE1 bell housing on the back. So if you have a look there, you can see just how close we are, but yet with enough room to have this engine safely and securely sitting within this engine room. So we're now we're at the back of the engine. Right next to my head, we have the engine breather system. So this here is the canister to ensure that the oil runs back to sump and any of the gases recirculate through internally back into the air cleaner side of the system. Here we have one of the rear air cleaners. They're a nice, easy FPT Donaldson style paper filter. Tucked underneath, we have our gearbox. So as I said, this gearbox has been reused from the back of the Volvo. The 311A, it is a very coaxial down angle gearbox. And the owner has elected to retain the mechanical cable actuation 
on this, which is a very simple and reliable system um, of having your, your gearbox actuation for your forward, neutral and reverse, your three positions. Shaft is a 3 inch, 316 grade stainless. And again, this is another component that we haven't had to touch at all with this particular vessel. Now the other advantage of what we've done is we've kept the existing propeller, which was only replaced a couple of years ago, which is a 32 by quarter inch by 28 and 3 quarter inch four blade Mercado prop. So again, that's been another thing that has actually worked really well with this particular vessel to be able to reuse as many components as we possibly can to ensure that it is a cost effective repower to give you that reliability and peace of mind, as well as the comfort of a, of a newer electronic engine. So on Vessel Fine Line, we actually only have a downstairs helm station here. The vessel doesn't have a flybridge. If you did have a flybridge, FPT do have the same panels available in a flybridge. The only difference being, instead of having a key, they have a start and stop push button. So you can start it with the key downstairs here, just like that, one click to the on position, let the screen power up, and then you can either start here off the key, or if you had a flybridge station, off a green and red start and stop button up the top. So this is a four inch touchscreen control panel. It provides you with all the engine information that you need to see. It gives you your speeds, your fuel consumptions, a trip, as well as total engine hours, as well as monitoring of a lot of engine parameters and also gearbox parameters too, if so required. So here on the control panel, this is our home screen here. Very easy to read, large numbers showing you the most important factors that you need to monitor. So, of course, the Cursor 13 is a 2400 RPM engine, so therefore the TACO will extend up to 3000. Your trip and your total engine hours, coolant temperature, oil pressure, and your fuel consumption instantaneous. As I flick to page 2, you'll see it will monitor again your engine speed, your engine oil temperature, torque percentage, your turbo in regards to bar of boost pressure, battery voltage, gearbox oil pressure if you want it connected, as well as your fuel temperature. The intake isn't shown on this particular one here, as well as having an alarm page, which shows you if there is any faults, it will list them straight up. Here's the 13 sounds like. Here at the back of Fine Line is where the exhaust exits. This is an 8 inch system running straight through just through a hot dog muffler and you can see that we do exit at the stern of the vessel here which is a wet exhaust so that's why you're getting the water splashing. You notice how quiet it is and how we really have no smoke whatsoever out the back of the cursor today. Back from our sea trials, we've been up the river, we've had a run We've had a really great run with this boat here. We've got some amazing footage. The vessel has achieved exactly what we were hoping for. So we're cruising at around about 18 knots and we topped out at about 23, 24 knots at 2,400 RPM. We're seeing a cruise of around about 1,800 RPM through to 2,100 RPM, just depending on where the vessel wants to be sitting and how fast the owner would like to cruise. So incredibly satisfied and happy client and we're super happy with this installation of the FPT Cursor 13 marine engine and we're sure this engine is going to be a great and reliable suit for this vessel for many years to come. Thanks very much for watching.